Um, welcome to our 10 podcast of Keen Minds based on NBC's The Blacklist. Uh, and in this one, for the hiatus be, uh, between 4A and 4B, we are going to focus on the relationship of Red and Liz. And I got to say, Jen, I am so, so um, scared of, of this one in a bit. Uh, because you're, we're basically trying to analyze the blacklist. Oh, I'm right there with you. Don't worry. I'm, I'm a little <laughs> nervous. So, hey, guys, please be nice. I know that that's yeah. not always the go-to with the blacklist fandom. Please be nice. <laughs> yeah. it's This is intimidating because, I mean, we're talking about, uh, to me, there is a master. It's a master work. The characters are so deep and so layered. This is going to be a ride. So, Bear with us, and here we go. Okay. I thought about starting with a, a, a very um, kind of a review of how did we get here? I mean, Red was a, with a shining star in the Pentagon, and now he's a shining star in the criminal world. A lot happened there, and, and a lot of this had to be with love and with family. So, um, from their origins, like, you know, Red is born in 1960, he gets into the Naval Academy, he has no criminal record of any sort, no criminal intentions, no nothing. Um, interestingly enough, I think that, that when we see about Red, he talks, the way he talks about his extended family, his parents, his grandparents, his his uncles, his cousins. So it's fascinating because to me, I don't know if you remember the, the specific ways and times he talks about other people. Well, I mean, one thing that I've noticed over the three and a half seasons we've had at the Blacklist so far is that Red sounds like he comes from a pretty solid background. He had two parents. They seem to be together. They both seem to be fairly normal people. He, he talks about, as you just mentioned, his extended family, so he had access to them. It's not like, you know, like Liz or like Tom that, that grew up without parents. I mean, Liz had Sam, but it was a single parent. It was an adopted parent, and Tom had nobody. And so th this isn't where Red's coming from. So I think it raises even more questions when you look at that, how he got from that into the Naval Academy makes sense, but that break there seems even more, e even a sharper break than what it might have been. If, shattering. Yeah, it, what it might have been if he had come out of a, a criminal background, you know, if he had been a delinquent youth. Mm -hmm. he, yet he talks a, a little bit about his delinquent tendencies and, and, and stealing the grapes and wanting to be a Boy Scout. Um, the fact that he wasn't a Boy Scout might have been because the the the, the parents traveled and he wasn't he had an access. He may have been an army brat, so therefore with no access. I also find interesting the way he talks about those parents and what it says about his relationship to them. Um, I find interesting that he mentions his mother only to Aram, only after Aram has done something for him tantamount to saving his world. Um, that is an interesting thing. He seems to have had a lot of love and affection in an easy relationship with his mother. I find interesting that he mentioned his father to four people. And those four people is a conflictive relationship. He, wrestler, Agent Martin, Nico the Markin, and the Cowboy. People that he may admire their their um, professionalism but they have a an uneasy relationship with him so to me that means that Ren is has an, an uneasy relationship with his father maybe his father was an authority figure interesting because he's gonna I think inform in the end some of these choices he also mentioned just for fun Aunt Lucille the one that is always arguing with Buddy an Uncle Scott who's drunk by noon and the Uncle Vic who must also be drunk because he crashes cars on Saturday nights. Um, and, and those things, I think that, yes, Red is a raconteur, but I think he always starts with, with, a, um, 
with a real thing. So he graduates sometime between 83 to 81, 81 to 83. And um, then marries Carla at some point, and Jennifer is born either from him or from someone else. I tend to think it is his daughter. What do you think? Jennifer is one of those places, and I think you and I have talked about this outside the podcast before. I am, I feel like we have so little information about Jennifer. I have conflicting views in a lot of holes in my thoughts about her. Because the moment that that Red was on his knees and a bullet about to be put into the back of his head, Liz's name was the one rolling off his lips, not Jennifer's. And so if Jennifer was his firstborn daughter, she, if she's his, I mean, and I could see if she was an illegitimate daughter, I could see him still loving her, you know, and raising her as his own. I mean, if that's the case, if it was Carla's daughter and and it could have been, from a previous marriage of Carla's. Who knows? Um, Just but, pretty young, though. Eh, or, or a previous, you know, relationship, regardless. Mm-hmm. Um, but I I just don't... Because I was actually re-watching a scene from, uh, from Mako Tanita today and with, with the ballerina girl. And mm-hmm. the assumption there is that that's for Jennifer, but I also think that a lot of the, the images with Jennifer and the, the little girl and everything, some of those may be red herrings, that some of it might be Liz, some of it might be Jennifer. I, I just don't know yet, especially mm-hmm. with the new information that was dropped on us in the fall finale. And I know that there's a lot of conflicting views on that, if we can believe it or not. But I, I keep laughing like, well, you know, when, when do we actually believe what, what we've been handed? You know, when if they handed us the truth outright, would we believe it? We, we're fans of the blacklist. We question everything. Mm-hmm. Um, so I don't know I, that long, long, short answer long. I really don't know what I feel about Jennifer quite yet. I feel like there's a lot of information we have not received. Interesting. I, 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 I agree. We have not received. I have sermons a lot, but those are theories until it's shown. I no idea. I'm on my crazier one is she's the actual um, Carolyn Gibbons, PhD in applied physics that Red gives the identity to Liz. Um, and I would not be surprised if he also works with Jennifer, you know, out when he's not on the blacklist. Um, I find that interesting because he also uses the name Givens in another place. So I wonder if he gave her a different identity in a name that he has um, a connection to, kind of to keep a connection. I, I have thought about what you said, but it's, it is Liz names on his lips when he's thinking he's dying. But then if, if Jennifer knows who her father is, and Liz doesn't, and there's so much that he knows he must say to Liz, maybe that is the Liz that he's saying. It's all the things that he, the regret of the things that he has not said. And that's possible. That That's a very good possibility there. Um, we know that, that um, they were in marital therapy, which is very interesting because um, he shows disgust at, at Frank cheating on Naomi, and values the loyalty above all else. Yet they were in marital therapy, and it worked. We don't know if it was because of the lovely voice, lovely voice of the therapist, or because he actually managed to accomplish something. But I find that little detail; those little details are like little pins in my brain. They can stick in there, and they don't get out. <laughs> and then it's uh, 1994, 1984. Red is in a relationship with Katerina because Liz is born in March of 85. Um, I find another interesting little detail that sticks in my head like a like a pin. Liz lived with Rostov on and off for four years. And I'm just finding myself now, did Katerina took Liz and went from one of her husbands or Marks to another and Liz was used to having different names and among all those things that she was being trained was shooting and stealing things because a lot of people seem to think that Liz um, criminal 
um, stealing and brush passes and slate of hands comes from Sam. There is no indication whatsoever that Sam had criminal tendencies or a past or anything. I think at one point they did make the comment about Sam having a criminal past. Wrestler assumes is 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 Sam because they talk about the criminal past of of um of uh, her father, her criminal father, and Wrestler assumes because he has no idea that she's adopted that is Sam. And then the, apparently that that was never clear. And when this um, when Red says that this is a very good thief, they keep assuming is Sam. But Sam would have been vetted. There would have been no way on earth that they would have not known that Sam was a thief or a criminal. That's true. That's very true. So I'm just finding... I I do wonder if she had some training because we've mentioned before in a previous podcast that for a four-year-old child to pick up a, a gun not only be able to even pull the trigger, which which is tough to do in general. I mean, it takes some amount of strength and dexterity to pull the trigger at all, mm-hmm. especially, you know, e- even if it's... Uh... But, I mean, she, she would have had to get the safety off if the safety was on, pull aim, and pull the trigger, and she took the man down. It's not like she grazed him. It's not she like... She aimed. It, she she hit... followed him. Yeah. And so, I mean, that, that child had training. If she didn't, then that's a major faux pas with the writers, which I don't think it was. So that child had training. Mm-hmm. I also find you know, they keep talking about a secret in, in the night of the fire. And I am thinking, is the secret that Liz was carrying in the, the secrets that Red refers to when she sh- he, he shows her the map and says, you know, they don't know that you don't know anything. Who's they? We tend to think of all the people in the ma- in the map. But Sa- Katerina was a secret keeper. Was was Katerina bringing Liz, and therefore Liz knows all these people? And if she starts remembering, she will remember everything, including some people that shouldn't be connected with the cabal or with a, a KGB agent. I I just wonder. Yeah, I mean that that seems like if she did go along with Katerina. To various places i when they were talking when kirk and red were talking about you know she lived on and off with you you know sometimes you were there sometimes you weren't i read that as saying that katarina and and liz were in the house and sometimes kirk was there sometimes he was off on business i kind of an absent not an absentee father but an often gone on business father that mm-hmm. he wasn't it, it wasn't this perfect home that that Kirk would like to think it was when he looks back at his little princess taking her to the palace and mm. you know that the, there might have been moments and such but that he wasn't there often I mean which which is not necessarily bad plenty of fathers travel for for work but but I did not read it that Katarina was leaving often but if because he didn't seem he was remembering Katarina with rosy glasses. He was, and and I think that I think Kirk <laughs> remembers her with rosy glasses, while Red has spent so long building those walls up that he. I mean, he made the comment. He goes, "Talk, talk to me about her because I remember what she did, not who she was." And I think that the two men have direct opposite views. Kirk remembers too much of who she was and not what she did. And Red remembers too much of what she did, not what she was. But I do wonder if Kirk didn't find out what she did long after. I think you're right there. I think that that for him it was a shock. I mean, the the most I could think of is is uh, Kirk was like uh, the engineer in Wujing, the American Chinese engineer in Wujing that the CIA asked him to help them, and he kind of did. Because I think that by now we, we we have eliminated the idea that Rostov was Russian, or he may have been Russian, but he wasn't a Soviet. Yeah. Um, there were no businessmen. There were no rich people. You know, the only I'm sure there were wealthy people. But there wasn't a businessman. When you talk about I was a businessman, that doesn't quite jibe with Soviet, um, so the Soviet Union, more like the West. And I was was thinking was was Rostov. A sort of like um, uh, in Ruslan Denisov, there is a, a reference there that the you, the Soviet Union started the process of 
of of nas- of um, privatizing the oil concerns, and they sell to Annika. And I do wonder if if Rostov um, j- role in those things was kind of like uh, brought in as a consultant to help help the Soviet Union transfer during the perestroika years into the end of the Soviet Union. And that that if Katerina was really KGB, it kind of doesn't, it makes sense too, because then she would have been traveling back and forth with him. Um, but it also makes sense if Katerina was really a CIA agent, which is what I think. But, you know, that's a subject for another podcast. Um, but anyway, so she lives with, with Rostov. On and off, whether that means what you think or what I think, I guess we'll find that that out later. Um, but Kate Kaplan was apparently attached to Lish to Liz, and I do wonder if she was like a nanny bodyguard. I think that that's very possible because I mean, just the comments she was making in at the end of season three when she said, you know, that Agnes reminded her of Liz at that age, and then she talked about in season four where she said, "You handed me, you know, Elizabeth mm-hmm. as a child or as a small baby." You know, I mean, just the comments that she was making and the fact that she was willing to go as far as she was for Liz. Risking her life. Yeah, she did. It speaks of an incredible connection with her and the fact that it overrides the one that she has with Red, which we've seen that she's willing to risk her life for Red as well because she was Mm -hmm. good. And she just, just to put the comment I'm about to make in perspective she doesn't seem very comfortable around guns she seems very proficient around them but she's not comfortable with them she prefers cleaning up not making the mess and (laughs) that's funny (laughs) that's that's always the impression I've gotten of Kate um but but when Red had been shot and the cabal was you know coming at the at the the warehouse she stood next to him very uncomfortably fiddling with that gun but she was standing there for him she was willing to die by his side to help protect him even if both of them thought that there was no way out and and so the fact that she did what she did and that that betrayal because she knew that red was going to see it as a betrayal but the fact that she did that especially because i do think that kate knows the relationship between red and, and liz knowing that and that she went that far she had to have known her almost as long almost as long <laughs> um i i agree that there's something there in in Emily k kaplan is a very interesting character um and and vital to this whole situation and then finally we got dumb and the relationship of dom and red definitely talks about almost in those Tom doesn't ref- doesn't tell Red in all those like you had an affair, uh, you let yourself be seduced or you seduce Katerina. There is none of that. There is no mention of her actual husband. So it almost makes me. Dom is the the stumbling stone that makes me believe that Red and Katerina were married, because there is no way that I can make everything jive. Every time I I think okay, well maybe she was really KGB, maybe. Uh, she really had an affair with him or 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 target him and then I hit dumb and it I can't go forward it it could be and I saw some chatter about this with the episode with Dom uh, in season three that it's possible that Dom was former KGB or at least foreign intelligence uh, which you would assume would be KGB considering he was out of Russia but if he was, then I would think that he would have been more comfortable with that lifestyle and possibly more accepting of the idea that his daughter fell in love mm. with a mark and basically, you know, well, Rostov's a mark and so are you, but you actually had a child with her and care about her and love her. And so to him, even if Red and Katerina were never married, the relationship was more real to Dom if he came out of that lifestyle and mm. this is just a theory. This is just a possibility. There, obviously, I don't have, don't have. Absolute yeah, that that is a that is a fascinating subject. Um, the only thing that that I find difficult with that is the mention of the refrigerator, having a freezer in a farm, because in the nineteen twenties, maybe nineteen uh, early nineteen thirties. Uh, re- freezers were very uncommon in farms that were almost unheard of. 
in certainly in the Soviet Union, they would have had no idea what those were. But isn't it possible that it was just an icebox? A literal icebox? A box with a bunch of ice in it? Especially in the it's Soviet the freezer. Union? Yeah, I but know, but, the freezer. but that could just be a it translation. Could be. It could be it a could translation be. issue. It could I mean, be. It never, that never occurred to me. It could be. There, you get a rain in my parade. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's all right. I can make more crazy theories. They keep coming in my head. Um, so basically, Dom talks about a Hobson choice. Dom talks about um, choices that Red made for Katerina. And those seem to kind of be, I wonder if those are, the, this is one and the same, or there were many choices involved. But anyway, those choices get to this point where um, where we are in, 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 in the pre-fire situation. Now, I do wonder what happened with the, the family, Red's family, with Carla and Jennifer, because Carla recognizes Liz. So that is, that is a good thing. That means that he knew her for a long time. Because you don't recognize a child you haven't seen since they were four when they're grown up. That requires quite a bit of, of, of knowledge, even under a different name, Elizabeth, Elizabeth Keene, it could be anybody. Um, and finally, Red is cutting a home movie and he's splicing it and there's a woman's leg. We don't see what it is. It's the same bubble girl who's in the Tacoma Park house. And by the way, in Tacoma Park, there are some notable examples of mid-century modern architecture. So that is a little thing there that is starting to, to sound interesting. I don't know what it means yet, but it's there. So anyway, we, got, we get to the fire. Um, and at the time of the fire, we're getting, which by the way, it seems, it seems like Constantine didn't know anything about the fire. Did you get any, any impression that he did? Not really, because as soon as Liz brought it up, he, he started changing the subject, just kind of brushing it off. What's, what's the memory of a four-year-old child? And so it's it's like he didn't know about it, and he wasn't willing to discuss things that he didn't know with her because he was trying to get the upper hand of, I have all these answers. And if mm -hmm. he didn't have the answers to that, he wouldn't want to touch on that and say, yeah, you picked the one thing I don't know about. I mean, because that, if that's the first thing out of the box, that's not a good way to start it. And so it, it sounds like he's, you know, at that point he was trying to brush that off because he didn't know. And I, I don't, I, I suppose that would mean he wasn't there. Either he wasn't there or if he was there, he had a very bad part in it. It's one or the other, I think. Mm -hmm. I think so. I think I agree there. It's, it's one or the other. And so at the time of the fire, we got um, in the fire. This, the, I don't know if we ever talked about this, but to me, the fire in 1989 makes no sense. To me, that fire in Red's appearance is all Russian Orthodox Christmas because it doesn't make any sense, especially because Carla was living in D.C. before 1990. So if the fire had been at the end of 1990, or Red had disappeared at the end of 1990. Where was Carla living on in 1990? So just the wording kind of tells you, ah, this is starting to all sound like it was one event. The disappearance, the fire, makes sense. Red has huge back burns, and he, and Liz is remembering her father. So yeah, there. I think. So. Yeah, I I think I think so. Um. But after the fire, with those events uh, that are worth probably three of this, um, several things happened at once. Red disappeared, emerging four years later as a master criminal. Um, Constantine changes his name. So he wants to dissociate himself from the Rostov name. I think that has to do with Katerina being disgraced. Don't you think? Because I, I find that very strange. It hasn't been addressed, and I'm sure it means something. Well, when when I first saw him come on, I, I assumed because of the your father was in was in foreign intelligence. I assumed that he changed his name because you know the KGB felt it was a hard time for Liz's father, et cetera, et cetera. Because I was equating Constantine Rostov and Alexander Kirk with her father. So that was my assumption for the name change, but no, I mean, that's obviously not it. And so, 
I mean, it, it could be something having to do with Katarina and the fact he was trying to distance himself from that, which is interesting because most people who go through a terrible divorce and bad situation don't do an entire name change. And so that's... They're probably not married to a KGB agent, too. That is a fair statement. But we're going back to what if he had something to do with the fire? What if he was involved in it? What if, mm. you know, I, in, you know, he was an honest businessman. Well, okay, what if finding out that his wife is a KGB agent suddenly drove him to not be so honest, to lash out? Because obviously something from point A to point Z over here in which he was willing to kill a bunch of people, you know, both himself and hire people to do it. I mean, he, there were multiple people he was giving the death you know, death penalty to just one right after another. He killed the lady in the in the wedding that got shot. He was willing to kill all of Liz's friends, her husband, multiple times. I mean, the man seems to have no conscience left and be so driven by his sickness. And so I do wonder if finding out that his wife had had an affair, that she was a KGB agent, that he was possibly a mark, if that sort of broke him. And so he no longer was Constantine. Mm -hmm. in, so is that that's another one who who died in the fire? Konstantin Rostov died in the fire and became Alexander Kirk. Red kept his name but became a criminal. Uh, Katerina commits suicide if that's what she did. I don't think. I think that that uh, the the whole point of of Vanessa Cruz was here's a woman very good at this guys who can become anybody and who uh, fake a suicide with a with a drowning. I, I I think it would have been something else. They would never have used drowning in both places if it weren't supposed to be a hint towards it. And also, I'm sorry, but a major player in the spy game who supposedly is committing suicide to protect her daughter from whatever the threat is out there, if she's really committing suicide, why not leave a body so that the people after her know that she's done this? And so exactly. that, the suicide by, by drowning, you know, walking into the water, that just doesn't click with me. I, no. I think we'll see her by the end of season four, or at least the the shadow of Katarina mm -hmm. Rostova coming up. Her presence is coming. Yeah, yeah I, I agree there completely. And then the last one that we see, Carla and Jennifer going to protective custody. They get relocated, and they basically die. So Carla and Jennifer Reddington become somebody else. Naomi and God knows what her name was. Probably Jennifer, because you don't you probably wouldn't need to change the child's name. Um so there is this there's all these people connected, you know, Constantine and his wife, Red and his wife and their children all basically have a a real or a fake death and they become somebody else. So th that is a pivotal thing that changes everything and Liz is left with no memories and what she gains back potentially are are scattered and shifted around because the doctor talked about that, that that they're not reliable memories that they're going to be sort of misplaced the ones mm -hmm. that she was able to gain back and uh, I do wonder what it does to someone when you have suffered such traumatic things, yet you cannot, you never process it. You never dealt with it. You just got your memories erased in, in that, in the way she describes herself. She talks about being narcissistic, about trying to rewrite her past, about having, you know, wanting to have children so that she can write a different past. And Red asked about, you know, does he know about you as a child? So apparently there is something about Liz as a child that I think is far more than we have seen, that that drives Liz, who she, Liz is, what Liz wants. What are your thoughts on that? It's interesting because I've always equated, you know, the, the conversation of the pilot of does he know about your childhood because he follows that up immediately with does he know about the fire. And so I think he was fishing for information. How much does Tom know? How open are you with Tom? You know, that, that sort of thing. Because he knew secondhand about Tom really at that point because he had he'd never 
physically laid eyes on the man. He just knew what was going on. But I think it was twofold that that he um, he was fishing for information about what Tom knew, and he was also fishing for information about what if Liz had remembered something, because mm-hmm. he hasn't seen her. He has not communicated with her since she was four years old, and so there's no telling what's broken loose. What if something had broken loose and she just never read had never heard that it had you know what I mean and and Mm -hmm. I think that that's he's just trying to kind of get a lay of the land there and try to figure out Mm -hmm. what it is that she knows and what she doesn't know without being I mean I I mean all all the all the men seem to have had is some pictures of her birthdays maybe some stories a bottle of that wine that we have no idea if after killing Sammy went to his house uh, got the bottle of wine, some more pictures in the music box. <laughs> we have no idea about what happened to, to any of it. Hi, Aunt June. I just killed Sam. I'm going to ransack his house now. Excuse me. Hat tip. <laughs> That's a story. That's very a story. red. <laughs> yeah, a story, a, a little thing about the, 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 the bottle, the wine, whatever, and then goodbye. Um. I hope the funeral is a good one. Oh <laughs> um, but the funny thing is that then it's funny how many things that I've read had managed to keep out of Liz's life, which to me is unbelievable. This is a control freak that actually have managed to keeps eyes on her but that's it he knows that you know ronnie cheated on her and she almost committed suicide he knows that he was with frankie Oma in omaha grifting he knows that he she was seducing the, the night manager so it, it doesn't mean does it this mean that maybe ronnie and frank and all of them have been guys that tom that bread had put in her life just because he owned up to Tom doesn't mean that he's owned up to all of them. See, as soon as you start saying, "Does isn't that possible to all these guys, I immediately went, are now dead. They are all six feet under because they screwed with Liz. <laughs> Ronnie's gone. Uh, what What's his name from Omaha? Frank. Frank's gone. These men are all six feet under at this point because Red followed behind and went, nope. <laughs> no, I, I wonder if... He was, because I imagine as, as much of a control freak as, as Red is, that he probably couldn't really hear about it in real time. I imagine he had his eyes and ears, and if big things, like Tom, Tom was eyes and ears, if big things happened, Red heard about them. But if he was in prison, I mean, we've heard about him being in prison several times, we've heard about him being incapacitated, ill, and injured, and various other things. I mean, so... These sorts of things could have happened while, and he wouldn't have heard about it until six months later. And and so, I mean, what good is it going to be if the situation's already passed to jump in? And so he takes extra precautions. He shifts the board a little bit. He hires, you know, Bud's operative Tom Keen to keep an eye on her. Now, that sort of thing. Because he's off building a criminal empire. He... As much as he would have loved to have raised her himself, he obviously chose not to. So he wasn't going to every, you know... If she second a, guess everything. Yeah, second guess everything, not follow every inch, you know. I I imagine he couldn't have or he would have been jumping in. I mean, and he might have early on and gone, I have to take a step back or I will never be able to be out of her life. Basically all or nothing sort of thing. The conversation they cut out for Tom, with Tom. The reason I can do what I do is because it doesn't matter if I don't come back. Exactly. Yeah, because he had, I do wonder too, because when when we get that monologue, when I hired Tom Keen, he says something that to me kind of stuck there, kind of pin, and I kind of like was able to get the pin out. He says, um, you, the Care, some scares a father had served you well, but you've outgrown him. And I do wonder if that outgrowing some scare meant she started to show real criminal tendencies. She was grifting, she was stealing, she was doing, because we have had no idea. 
and, and Sam couldn't stop it. Sam didn't know how to handle it. Because I've always found the relationship between Liz and Sam is kind of an odd one. Like, there's what Liz says, and then there's also what, what's shown that seems to be in conflict. I would love to pick the writer's brains on this. But you have in season one when Sam dies, in the wake of that, she tells Tom, he was my whole world. But... In the episode, I think right before that, when, you know, the, the episode that he actually dies in, when he first calls, she looks at him and goes, it's my dad, you know? And, you know, like, she never hears from him. And, you know, like, like it's a rare thing for him to call. And so I get the impression she doesn't talk to her family much. She doesn't, you know, it may not be that she's not close to him, but there's a difference in a child, in a grown child that's, close to her family yet doesn't talk to them on a daily basis and someone that usually if someone is your whole world you're in much more communication you're not going to just go oh my gosh my dad's calling what's going on is the world ending are you okay you exactly. know that's not the response now granted that could have just been grief talking and that's a possibility like he's the only look suddenly i realize looking back he's the only one i've ever had but she also described herself as raising herself it's just there's a lot of conflict there between what she says about herself, what she says about Sam, the way she reacts to Sam. I feel like we have a lot of missing pieces to that puzzle. Yeah, and I, I don't know. I mean, maybe it's just me, but I assume that most people would be like that, that they have a, 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 even a mediocre relationship with their parents. If my parent, if my father would call me and say, hey, I don't know, they're, I'm in the hospital and they're making a few tests, I'll hang the phone and I'll get on a plane. I mean, I think that most people that that can and you get to you you learn that your parents may tell you like things in a happy voice and you know that that's not true. So you just go into what you gotta do. And, and I think that Red had part of Red anxiety over will Liz ever love me is he kept telling her, is there something I can do? Shouldn't you be there? Why are you talking cases? You should be with your father. And, and I think that is a, is a lot of fear in Red that when Liz learns who her father is, she's going to not care for him. I mean, we already got the issue with the money. Like, I don't want your money. It's dirty money. Well, it was perfectly okay when he was exonerating you from killing Connolly, which, by the way, nobody told you to do it. And everybody tried to stop you and have you listen. It wouldn't have happened. Uh, and he was perfectly fine, you know, to protect you all these years. Yeah. And it's like there's that disconnect there. And I, I think that sometimes she, Liz has reactions to things like the money. And her reaction to that is, you know, I shouldn't do it because it's not right. She, she's trying, she, she kind of goes back to putting on this mask of, and I'm not saying that she doesn't. Righteousness. Yeah, because, you know, she's uncomfortable with where she's at right now, so she kind of gets on her high horse and says, no, no, that's dirty money. I would never touch that. And she's shown that before. I mean, she she refused to take the, the apartment at the Aubrey, but to be fair, she probably would have gotten in huge trouble with the FBI if she had done that. Um, but I'm sure it was said in such a way that it was uh, given by um a caring relative or aunt lucy or would have died i'm sure she red would have find a way but but yes there, there is a huge disconnect in liz between what she says and what she does and and i i feel that liz is a character that has a lot more darkness in her than she's letting and this this that in herself creates the yo-yo that we see with red i think it scares her because I, I go back mm. to the the conversation that liz and tom had on the phone when she was on the run and she said you know, she had just shot the the undercover cop which personally i've never been able to blame her for because the man drew a gun on red i mean and he sure as hell didn't look like an undercover cop like I there, think he was a bounty hunter. There, there were no signs. He came across as a bounty hunter. Everything about that, she was in defense of Red. I, I do not blame Liz for that. I would, <laughs> you know, if I had been in her shoes, I would have done the exact same thing. Um, and and she went out of her way to try to save the man. But she blames herself for that. She beats herself up for it. She, you know, she's seen this darkness in herself when she's been on the run. 
and because she beat the guy up in the in the diner and she, she's seeing this darkness and she also saw it when she was on the boat when she held tom on the boat she's seeing all this and she's she's telling him on the phone you don't understand you don't know some of the things i've done recently basically some of the things i've seen in myself that terrify me and tom says well you know i, I know who you are but I think that that's some of the disconnect in what she does and what she says. I think that she starts to see that sort of stuff and she starts backtracking and falling back behind that, that righteous mask of, oh, no, no, I'm, I'm the good FBI agent. I don't do anything wrong. You know, because it freaks her out. Because A bit like wrestler. Like yeah, wrestler with, with, with a rubber banding, but in a huge difference. I mean, she's going from dark, dark, not black, but pretty dark gray to a maybe lighter gray than mm-hmm. than uh than than uh, wrestler ever does but yeah and eventually I, I eventually i think she'll find somewhere in the middle and i think she's gotten a lot better about it once she got back once she had agnes she's already started moving towards a more balanced gray i think uh in the way she's reacting to things i, I think being a mother has done wonders for liz I really do. Uh, yeah, I, I agree there. I think that that she had she had is is finding herself and I think her quest and her need that a lot of people don't understand for finding who she is and the answers to her past is because I think Liz has a terrible fear that she's done something terrible and I am not sure that she didn't. Well, part of that, I mean, she sat there and and told red at one point she goes i shot and killed my father and then my mother walked into the ocean because i did this i am responsible for both of my parents deaths and that's what she believes i i agree i think that there is a fear and she may even not be able to consciously she may not be consciously aware of this fear it's just something that creates an anxiety within her that she can't quite pinpoint because she doesn't have the memory to be able to focus on and pull from the back of her exactly mind. and that gonna be terrifying i mean if you had a vague idea that you did something terrible it's like having a you know those days in which you have a vague idea that there was something you were supposed to do or remember and and you go through the entire day like there is something what imagine going through your entire life knowing that there is a huge horrendous thing of which you have your the palm of your hand burned for it so you know that is there it's not that you're gonna forget about it and you can't remember and you can't understand why you're doing the things you're doing. Uh, who, who taught her to steal? Who taught her to do sleight of hand? Who, do, who taught her to do a brush pass? It's like she's, there is something about Liz that is deeply, deeply troubled and she can't find it. And I think that, that I, I, I think when Red feels that looking in retrospect, I think that's what he's saying. Looking at who you are, I should have raised you myself because I don't think that Sam, with all his good intentions, was really equipped for Liz. I think that's a very good way of putting it. it he didn't have the, the training, the equipment to, to be able to handle it. He may not have had the full story. Um, I, I think he probably had quite a bit of it, but he may not have had the full story. We don't know. Um mm-hmm. And, and I would love to revisit Sam. Oh, I, I hope we do. I hope we get some flashbacks eventually uh, with Sam and just more on him and Red and how how they know each other. It just all of that, I feel like, is, is necessary moving forward. And the fact that we, we had the, uh, you know, the bomb dropped on us in the fall finale of, yes, Elizabeth is my daughter. I feel like that's, that's stuff that we're going to have to touch on moving forward because regardless of blood ties or not sam was liz's father growing up that is the only father she has actually known i and and going in there i mean she's going from sam who seemed to have been not an overprotective father figure um i I think that i have i get a feeling that liz basically wrapped sam around in her little finger and did with him whatever she wanted and to going into Red's overprotective world. And I think that, that you have some interesting views on, on how he really can figure it out that she's actually a grown woman. 
I, I think he continuously sees her as a child because I mean he's he's a father that the last time he had constant contact with her was at four years old. And then the next time he has constant contact with her, she's 28, I think. Mm -hmm. I think 28. Mm -hmm. And so that that gap there in which he's seen pictures, I mean, it's it's very it's kind of like we discussed in one of the podcasts about Liz watching that Liz watching Agnes on the quote unquote baby monitor mm -hmm. when Kirk had her was one of the closest oh, that she had ever been. Parallel. <laughs> it was one of the closest places she'd ever been. So for her, it was more real. And Tom's going, no, no, I've held this child. This is not real. Stop. And so for Red, the it's closest the thing she, the, the the closest thing that he's been to her since she was four years old until she's about twenty eight years old are pictures and stories and the, you know, as much Maybe as... Maybe he sat in a car and watched her from time to time. Yeah, that sounds Basically. completely creepy, but it's very normal for this <laughs> this world. <laughs> yeah. Well, if he's your father, I mean, if he's some, a strange man watching a child, that's very bizarre, but a child watching her father, his, yeah. his, his child. Yeah, is yeah. But no, yeah. I, I know what you mean. I'm just saying, and for this world, that's the, the spy dad watching the little girl that doesn't know. It's, it's very typical for the blacklist world um but regardless i think that's one reason he has trouble looking at her as an adult and and giving her that i don't want to say respect because i do think he respects liz but he it's the, the respect that you would give a grown woman um a lot of fathers have a tendency when their daughters hit adulthood to have trouble letting Adjust. go. Uh, yeah, adjusting, exactly. And I feel like with him, he's at that point. And he's, he's trying, and he's, him walking away and not fighting her saying, we're not going to live under your, under your watch anymore. The way he said, I know. And, and just, you know, good night, Elizabeth, Tom, and walks off. There was so much growth there. I was so proud of him. I wanted to give him a hug. I wanted to reach through my, <laughs> my television screen and hug the man because he finally had that. And I think that, that he has trouble with that because when Liz, quote unquote, died, you don't see him with a bunch of photos. You see him with that photo of her as a four-year-old child on her mother's lap. That's what he takes with him. It's not a photo of her now. It's not a photo of... Yes. Ooh, that is deep. Uh, it's, it's these writers, I'm telling you, man. <laughs> They're amazing. <laughs> yeah. Between the writers Whoa, and Oh, I never Spader. thought about that. Oh, that is juicy. That is but that's, juicy, that's yes. That's what he focuses on. And you see Kirk doing the exact same thing. And, you know, I, I don't know if he has pictures of Liz currently, but when he's standing there and he tells Odette, I, I'm not ready to die, he's holding a picture of Liz as a little girl. Both men viewed her as this four-year-old little girl that they were fighting for who needs to be protected, who can't protect herself. She's a little girl. We need to, to raise her. We need to make sure she's okay. You know, it's... Red is a father. He's been a father since the pilot episode. We just weren't sure what that connection was and what kind of father he was, whether it was blood-related mm -hmm. or there was something else that made him have those paternal feelings for her. And that is not, I get very frustrated. I'm trying to remember the phrase that's used. Um, people say that, that you're segregating him over to, to being a dad. I don't see that as a negative thing. I think that for James, he's an incredibly talented actor, and he's exploring that facet. That doesn't mean that they are limiting him. They've actually allowed him to stretch. Yeah, because, I mean, for you're, you're making a master criminal a very... Um, a, a very warm, caring father, a man who has done everything for his daughter. Um, the the yo-yo now that that is red and his overprotectiveness in 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 wanting to you know wanting to probably spend time with Liz and be loved and accepted and and have the light in the cave, and on the other hand, being probably scared. Oh, it's fine. My my dad is in the hospital. I'll get there when I get there. And Tom is telling him, no, 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 you don't understand. This is serious. He's dying. He's, it's a lot worse. 
And she's still not reacting. And Tom is like, I can get you in a flight. Is Tom who gets her on the flight? Is Tom who reserves it for her? And she's not even like saying, hey, you know what? I'm going to get her a car. And I'll be in, in I'll be in Nebraska, you know, by tonight. She doesn't do any of it. She's ignoring this situation completely. And I think that that it freaks Rhett to no end. Oh, I think so. And I think that the fact that she has the tendency and I, I think that Liz yo-yos to a great degree because she feels like he's not being honest with her, which is something that she needs in her life. And because she doesn't have the full story, she never knows when she can trust him and when she can't. Every time she does start to trust him, something comes up that says, oh, look, he's not telling you everything. What is it Red says? Let me put your mind at ease. I'm never telling you everything. That mm-hmm. comes up as a reminder for her. And, and she, I think that's why she gets so frustrated is that every time, I think she wants to trust him because there's that, that natural inclination of she knew him as a small child. She did trust him as a small child. So some part of her subconscious wants to trust Red. And every time she starts easing into that, something happens to spoil it. And she yo-yos on him. She she flips. Flip-flops is one of the, the comments, you know, in the, mm. in the fandom that she flip-flops on him so badly. And I think that that scares him in return. I think they feed off of each other on that. He's not honest with her because he's, one, protecting her, two, viewing her as a child, you know, three, there are just things that she she can't know yet. And mm-hmm. she reads off of that, and so she freaks out at him, and then he clamps down even more and says, she can't possibly know that I'm her father because she won't accept me. And I don't think any of this is conscious thought particularly, but mm-hmm. I do think that they are feeding off of each other badly at certain points. And, and it makes Red more nervous when it comes. And I think that that's why you've seen him leave stuff for her and then go back and destroy the evidence later. He wants her to know this information, but then he's scared. And yes. it's it's a beautiful thing, really, because Raymond Reddington is such an imposing figure. He has created himself to be this because he has to be in his world. And to see these moments of just utter fear are very humanizing for him. And I, I very much enjoy it. And James brings so, so much to that. Yes. Oh, he is, he's just terrific. Wait, let me ask you something, because I have my own ideas in the point. I mean, we do know because it is canon that Liz have thought at some point that Red is her father. Oh, she asked she tells him, this, yes. this, And she tells him to the judge. She asked him two times, one in Anslo Garrick and, uh, and another one in uh, Berlin. So at some point, she may have been seeing this. And, and I think... At this point, which are the ones, the moments that you think that Liz has thought that Red is her father? I mean, obviously, the two episodes in which she's asking that. One is Anslo Garrick, in which, you know, he came out of the box for her. You could see the terror and, and the, the, the absolute need, like, I'm going to kill Wrestler. I'm going to torture Wrestler. I'll do whatever I have to do, but I'm getting out of this box. And in... In Berlin, the the Berlin one is a bit more confusing for me because I cannot get is something she saw in those papers that Tom had that gave her that idea. There is no other thing. I mean, she's she's angry at him for killing Sam. She was ready to let him spend the rest of his life in a box being interrogated. And suddenly she goes, looks at these things, realizes that Berlin is a person and that is something about Sam and tries to save him. And that's where the the, the Mok and Gypsy. I, I think that there are probably multiple places off and on that she's probably questioned it. Um, I'm not sure she's ever 100% believed him. Uh, when, when she and Tom were talking about it in season two, when he asked her, does that mean Reddington's your father? Um, she said that she had asked him and he said no, but the way she said it to me felt like, well, I asked him and he told me no, so I can't tell you yes, you know, it it Mm -hmm. sounded like a deflection of the question, you know, it wasn't that she Mm -hmm. felt that way, it's that was the answer she was given. 
And um, another time that I think she may have been questioning it is right now. I, I think that she knows. I, I think want, she totally, thoroughly knows now. There's there's a preview for, for the you know episode back that she and Tom are talking. She says, I never uh, take anything Red says for granted or something like that. Or uh, n- never take anything at face value that Reddington says. Something along those lines. That's the gist mm-hmm. of it. And I, uh, you know, hat tip to whoever said this because I don't, it might have been Blacklister, but I don't remember who said it. Um, that Liz has learned her lesson with taking Reddit, you know, the, the, you know, at sh- face value, basically. Mm-hmm. That he's, you know, even if he doesn't straight up lie to her, which I'm not 100% convinced he doesn't every once in a while, when he feels like her safety will be compromised by the absolute truth. I, I don't question it because his priority is her. I mean, that's, I, I don't blame him for it. I'm just saying these people that are, he would never do that. You know what? <laughs> if, if, the choice, her first. if the choice is Liz's life being in danger or lying to her, he's going to take the lesser of those evils. But I mean, if you had a child and the child would be saved by you lying at the child, any day, no problem, got no moral anything about it. But I You can so, always tell later, hey, I'm sorry. Someone made the comment, said, um, you know, because of that, they wondered if she's running a DNA test of her own, quietly, under the radar, not talking to anybody about it. May not even be talking to Tom about it, or maybe that's what they're talking about. Who knows? But basically trying to run it under Red's radar so that she can go to him and say, I know you've said no, but the answer is yes. Do not try to squirm around this. Because if she asks him again, he's just going to keep telling her no. He, she asked him at one point and he said, if I wouldn't. She's asking the wrong question too. Yeah, she is. (laughs) Yeah. Am I your daughter? (laughs) That should be the There you go. The day she asks that, he will have to have trouble telling her. I, I, I agree there. I actually think that Tom knows. And that Liz knows. And I think that then in between this, what we are seeing is Liz following the advice Red gave Tom. You cannot let them know that you know, because it will put you at danger and her and Agnes at danger. And I think that she's just like, hey, you know what? Which will parallel the Keens when redemption starts of Tom trying to find out about about Scotty and Liz finding out about Red and both of them playing the parental figure to try to find out more information, which would be lovely. I do love my Keen parallels. So yay! I think that that is that is. A, I think that there was another point where she run a little test that I want to talk about uh, before we uh, we wrap this up, which is. And a lot of people got incredibly angry at the beginning of of uh, of season two. Uh, when we get, you know, Berlin, she came back for him. He's all like nice and lovey. And, you know, they sit at the stairs with a hand folded in exactly the same way, um, which is like the third or fourth time they've done that. And then Lord Baltimore happens. She finds out that Red wife is alive and, oops, there is a girl, so maybe she is not Red's daughter. Because remember, at this point, she has no idea that, about Katerina. So she sees Red. I think that there is something and then telling her, this got to be my father. I mean, it's a criminal father that abandoned. It's a criminal a, a, a criminal that abandoned his family coming and wanted to talk to me only. you got to be stupid not to start questioning it. Like, maybe this is my father. I mean, what else would you want to talk to me? I don't think she's deluded like she's that special. Um, but then she finds she finds Carla, and she's, like, fascinated talking to her, and Carla doesn't even want to see her. Carla is, like, looking around, looking at the wine, looking at this, looking at the other thing, yet she knows perfectly well who she is. I do wonder, and I, I know your theory about Carla being Katerina. Um, I, I'm not totally on board with that i am also not totally against it quite at this point um <laughs> that's a that's a um, it's a, step, it's it's a, a step, step up baby steps with me baby steps um but i i am more inclined to think that 
Red may have cheated on on Carla with Katarina, um, which I don't know why he'd be so angry at at the husband on that. Um, but regardless, he's he's part part of the reason that I eh, that doesn't matter. Um, <laughs> sorry, I'm trying mm. to smooth this out in my brain here um if if liz is the product of an affair that carla's ex-husband had while married to her it doesn't mean so much that as a child carla would have been cruel to her she might have even raised her for a little bit in her own home depending on how long red had her after he took her from from Katarina mm-hmm. and and uh, Constantine. And if that's the case, she may, you know, she's looking at her and we keep hearing how much Liz looks like Katarina and so she's sitting there and she's going, "Thank you for shoving this in my face again. I had gotten past this, but now I'm looking at the stark reminder of my husband's betrayal." Mm. Thanks for that. I think a lot of people see that. I, I may be the only crazy person, but I must have watched that scene, I'm going to say probably 60 times. And, you know, it is what is implied, but then there is something else. Like, um, I don't know what it is, but definitely. So but my point about that scene is, Carla is trying not to look at her. Red, Liz is like trying to like, eat her up with her eyes like and I'm thinking at that point she's thinking wait a minute maybe Red is my father because I didn't buy that one last time and if if Red is my father I wonder if this is my mother um and then they find he finds about Jennifer I think when in Monarch Douglas Bank she she's gone she t- she's telling about, um, no, wait a minute. The Mara Douglas Bank gets uh, Carla back. Then, when he's getting Carla back, I think Liz runs a little experiment. I've seen Liz have this experiment phase two times. Uh, one when... Um, she tells Red about being so nervous about stealing the stuff in the embassy in, in Madeline Pratt. And Red tells her that I'm not going to let anything happen to you. And second, in that occasion, she tells she calls and tells them that I got your money. Therefore, um, you can go to that exchange. And to me, that makes no sense. We see no confirmation that anybody had taken that money. Uh, it's not referred by anybody. And certainly Liz doesn't have the authority to take that money. She wouldn't even be able to find the money. She found Kaja. There is no indication that Kaja has been at that point given to the FBI or Kaja has given them that information. Nothing. There is no information about that. Just Liz telling Red, I got your money. Not the FBI got your money. I got your money. You think she was just blocking? Uh, Yes. It was a test. She wanted Red to bite and tell them, no, you can't do that. And when Red tells them, no, you can't do that, you see Liz's face, like she's like like waiting. Is this going to pan out? And then, you know, Red says, you can't do that because at one time you're going to find out, you're going to ask, how did I become this thing? And I think what Red was telling her, because then you will have killed your mother and your father, this time for real. But m- maybe Carla is not her, her mother, but that is a test that Liz is running. And it doesn't pan out. And if you see the way she goes to that hotel, she's a surly 13-year-old girl who tried to tip her hand and didn't work out. And she goes there. Like, she's her attitude is like, you know, she, her arms are crossed. She's, she's just a surly 13-year-old that didn't get her way. She runs something in red, runs circles around her and knew that she was not going to let anybody die and goes... He's a little nervous of the exchange, but Red would have never done that if he thought that there was an, a, any possibilities. He would have got his own money to put back. He would have done any number of things. Which is it wasn't really, that. 
Which is really funny. We were talking about earlier that, that Sam wasn't equipped to handle Liz. I think Liz is used to doing that to people. I think that that drives her absolutely insane that Red does it to her because she's used to doing it to people. She also mm-hmm. probably did not do it to Tom quite as well as she thought she did in their first marriage because he just kind of played dumb and did the thing. But, you know, I, and I think... Yet. She, and yet, she did not play that dumb. Because remember then that Tom says, oh, I know all your tales. And Liz is like, oh, you do? And yet, at this point, Liz have known for weeks that he has a box. Hasn't said anything. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I think that Liz is a lot more skilled than, than we give her credit. Oh, I agree. She's just good at playing dumb. She is. I do think so. Um, And so I think that's one of the things that drives her absolutely insane about Red is that she's used to being able to play people when she wants to. And she she has a really hard time playing him. Uh, Even with with when she had Tom on the boat, uh, Red said, you know, it's my business to know when people are lying, to be able to read people. And Mm -hmm. she she thinks she has it in the bag. And I think it was in the last podcast we were talking about that Red knew. He knew for a long time that maybe not exactly what was going on, but that Tom was alive. She had not killed Tom. You know, he makes little snide comments like, you know, if I didn't know better, I would think that your informant was Tom, you know, and stuff like that. So he he at least knew that she hadn't killed him. And so she, he he is a very, very skilled chess player. Yeah, but I think that she... It's it. She definitely has the abilities to do it too, and 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 she hoodwinked the FBI. Hadn't it been for wrestler putting a little thing on her to to follow whatever she did in the FBI, they would have had no idea that she knew about the Victor Falcon murder or any of that. I mean, I think that that Liz, you know, all in all, she is absolutely Katarina and Red's daughter. Yeah, I agree. And heaven help us if she'd actually been raised by those two. She would have been impressive. I mean, this Agnes. Is... Yeah. <laughs> Tell me that, that girl is going to be a badass. <laughs> because she's getting in from both, from basically almost every side she's getting to be a super spy. I mean, that girl's going to be intelligent. She's going to be a badass. And she's going to be able to run everybody around her little finger. Yeah, it's going to be a beautiful thing. I can't wait. I hope that we get to see her as a toddler before the show ends, you know, just starting in on that. It's going to be gorgeous. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, do we have anything and else? I think that pretty much wraps. I mean, do you have anything that you want to comment on, on Red and Liz, except that I am so excited to see where this is going because I am absolutely certain Liz knows Red is her father. And that little comment, oh, you told me my father was dead, that's her play in him. Oh, I think so too. I think that she's taken that that step up where we were talking about she couldn't run circles around him i think she's starting to learn from the master finally i mean (laughs) she's learned a lot from him i think she's finally started to pick this up from him to the point where she's and he's been so emotionally unbalanced is not a good way to put it because that makes him sound crazy but out of control in in a way emotionally off kilter off kilter, off kilter is a perfect way. Um, yes. He's been so off kilter with the emotional situations he's been thrust into recently that I think if there was any time she could do this, now's the time. And she's about to do it. And so I don't know if we're actually going to, going into 4B, that, that it's going to be brought up immediately or not because the Blacklist tends to like to let things ride like this. But I do think that in the background she'll be watching, yeah. listening, running tests, do, doing that she, quietly, very quietly. She's profiling. Mm-hmm. And, and Megan made the comment that we're going to get back to profiler Liz, and I'm thrilled to death that she pushed for that because that is one of my favorite things with Liz. Love it. Mm-hmm. And and it was one of the things that in the first, it, it goes right back to episode one when she, and when Red is basically teaching her to think, think like a criminal, how you're going to, how you're going to find some money, how this fits, how that fits. And you see how Red is so proud of her. So I think that this is like, we're not, this is the next level. This is where you're starting to play the master. Yeah, I think so. 
And I, I think that Liz has grown exponentially since the pilot episode. We started out with her wearing the mask of an innocent, you know, innocent little FBI profiler who was, she, she was playing house back then. Uh, I think that she had convinced, I've made this comment before, I don't know if it's been on the podcast or just in general, that I think Liz wore a mask so well that she had convinced herself by the pilot that she was you know, the, the little goody two-shoes by the book, you know, she she didn't have darker tendencies. She, she'd she married a man that was supposedly super... It was a innocent. face. Yeah, it, it really was. And I now I think there was a lot of deeper... I've always said that I think that she fell in love with Tom, who he really is, and mm -hmm. accepted what he pretended to be because that's what she was wanting to pretend to be at the time. Yeah, and they were they they fell in love with in spite of Tom, not with Tom the teacher. <laughs> yes, exactly. And um, but but I do think that as she becomes more stable in herself, more accepting of her darker darker tendencies, and yet not letting herself go too far, that she's finding that balance there. And in doing mm -hmm. that, she's really coming into her own. And it's it's a very cool thing to watch I, I she you know there's a kudos lot of to megan oh so many and there there's so many comments about strong women in in television and i think that liz should be the go-to she's she's really amazing i love her character yep and i think with that we have wrapped up our uh 10th episode yeah, uh, oh. I don't think we did the question of the week this time. So apologies, guys. I It's I, a tough week. Yeah, it was. And it's also, uh, we're recording it on Thanksgiving week, so it's a little bit busy. Um, all right, so we're wrapping up. And uh, we'd like to thank everybody for listening. Uh, this will be posted after Thanksgiving. So we hope you had a safe, uh, safe and happy holiday there. And you can listen to us on SoundCloud, iTunes, and YouTube. And please feel free to leave us any feedback that you have on Facebook, Tumblr, or Twitter. We're on all of those. And we love to hear feedback from you guys. We're hoping that this is providing at least a little bit of, uh, <laughs> little bit of help through the hiatus. It gets so quiet. You, you can see the tumbleweeds, you know, the, the snow-covered yeah. snow tumbleweeds. <laughs> <laughs> and and uh, be sure to uh, tune us for next um, episodes in which we are going to tackle the really big, um, difficult posts. We're going into Tom and Liz. Yes. So stay tuned and look for our next episodes in the coming weeks. All right. We'll see you then. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.